I haven't made a video in a while, so I thought I'd make a quick one here. So over the years, I've amassed various programmers for PICs. So these ones were pretty good. Uh, however, they don't seem to work with Windows 10 anymore. Um, something to do with the kernel not supporting the drive. I, I did find places that reckon they found a bug, but it's one of found a workaround for the bug but it's one of those download some software from some dodgy website you don't know what it is um so yeah they were handy because you just you've got the zip socket you would just the it was a real basic program you'd compile your code in mp lab whatever version you want to use generate a hex file this little micro burn rom program you open up for these you just put the hex file into it you selected a pic it tells you where in the zip socket you needed to put your PIC in and you just programmed it and shoved it into your board. And I also had an ICSP header. Uh, this one I never managed to get working right. You tried to connect the ICSP header up and it just seemed to fry chips for some reason. I don't, I don't know why it just did. So these are most redundant. I've got a PIT kit 2, PIT kit 3, which I've never even actually had to get out of the bag yet because the 2 works or the 1 works if you just... So like you can put your various chips in this board, or what I generally do is I just connect from the PIT kit 2 via the ICSP, which is the in-circuit serial programmer. But you can even do it with the PIT kit one, which is what I've done. Well, actually, I haven't done it here. I've got the chip in the board, but you could do it via this header. So anyway, yeah, I think I was just uh, bored the other day. I had a week off work, just been tinkering around with some bits and bobs, and... Um, Old glue logic, you don't really come across it much in circuits anymore, but early processors were very basic devices. So to connect to the external world to like address memory to increase the amount of in-out pins you had, uh, be able to select between memory banks, you would connect all manner of things up to them. You'd see like early boards which had a processor on had loads of seven series logic. So AND gates, NAND gates, NOR or exclusive ORs. Shift registers, like shift registers, parallel, serial in, parallel outs, parallel in, serial outs and stuff. Um, it allowed you to expand externally from your main processor, which didn't really do any more than actually run the program. It had a few address lines on it, but it didn't, it didn't have the in-out ports and stuff like PICs have. Mostly redundant now. Um, you can pick up 7 Series Logic Dirt Cheap. I don't know if they still make it even. I can't really imagine there's much of a call for it or whether there's just a huge stock of it left that people flog for cheap on eBay. So I just wanted to knock up, I'm tinkering about, I just wanted to knock up a simple program that allowed me to use uh, PIC 12F675. This doesn't even have a serial port on it. I just manually wrote the code. So it's essentially using a couple of the pins as a serial port and clocking data into the shift register. Shift register is then running the LCD in 8-bit mode. Uh, anyone knows anything about the Hitachi HD, what is it, like the 447807748, whatever it is. You can run it in 4-bit or 8-bit mode. In 4-bit mode, you have to send the data to the display in two nibbles rather than as a full byte uh, with the shift register by using just three pins on the PIC. Uh, I can send eight bits at a time and then I'm having two more pins for the LCD. So it's still saving me a couple of pins, but <clears throat> if you wanted to, you could have a never shift register, which was actually driving the enable and register select lines and stuff. So there we are. The reason I'm making this video is um, and it's standard. You've got to put hello world when you get anything running. So uh, it's just about the internal RC oscillator in the PIC. So you do the maths, I'm using the interrupt vector on timer 1, I'm preloading timer 1 with a value. It's running a prescaler of 4 to 1, so it's getting 250,000 increments a second. Every time it overflows it triggers an interrupt. Uh, 5 interrupts triggers the PIC to send the data out and update the LCD. I'm just updating this whole row in one go. So I'm sending uh, 20 bytes of data out all at once, clocking it in one after another. And that takes a fraction of a second. Every now and then you'll see the quickest of blinks from the LEDs. Uh, within a millisecond or two, it's sent all the data out. Um, but yeah, so when I first got this running, it took a bit of tweaking of timer one preload to get the clock to run at the right speed. And then I'd notice... 
uh, you'd come back in a couple of hours, it would be a few seconds slow. And a few hours later, it would have run fast again. And it eventually dawned on me what it was. It was as the day's getting on, we're nearly into May here in England. Actually, we are May. It's the 1st of May today. And the temperature is terrible outside. It's nine degrees. So I'm getting up in the morning. I'm putting the heating on for a bit. As the room's warming up, the oscillator inside the PIC is speeding up. So all of a sudden I'm gaining a few seconds. The room warms up. I turn the heating off. The room slowly cools down and the oscillator slows down. And I eventually lose a couple of seconds. And then some point in the evening, I'm putting the heating back on. Uh, and the same happens. Overnight, I lost about 10 seconds. Um, now I'm about eight seconds behind now. Um, so yeah, if I put the heating on, got it a lot warmer in here, it would actually climb. When I went to bed last night, it was about three, four seconds, I think, in front. Um, something like that. And yeah, when I got this morning, it was 12, 13 seconds slow. So yeah, it's just... Uh, if you're ever after critical time with a PIC for something like, you know, if someone like walks up to a door and you just want the door to open for 10 seconds or something, it's fine. <clears throat> but if you're trying to do critical timing, like using a clock, you either need to use a real time clock module or you need to, like on these, you can run timer one's source can actually be configured to run off of uh, an external clock source. So like, you know, you'd have to use this is a um, 32,768 hertz crystal so you divide that by 256 you divide it by 128 and you get one pulse per second um, so yeah just a random video and I think out of all my programmers my old pick kit one the first one I ever brought uh, it's discontinued now it's not supported in uh, newer versions of MP lab this is like you have to use MP lab 8 I think is when it lost support it's a brilliant one because just little things, just this whole little board, you know, you've got one button on the GPIO master clear pin and you've got a potentiometer on the bit pin zero, so the analog digital converter. Then you just got the rows of LEDs. Uh, they only connect to four output pins, but by using the tri-state register, you can individually light each one of them. Uh, so yeah, you can do 12 LEDs with one pin. Fantastic little program. It's a shame they don't support it anymore. To be honest, most of this stuff, anyone starting out in programming today, they probably wouldn't use any of this. They'd just go straight to an Arduino because uh, it has so much on board, the bootloader in it. Um, the Arduino, I suppose, was kind of like a the pickaxe on steroids. I don't know if you ever come across it. They were something called a pickaxe. So the PICs were preloaded with a bootloader, kind of like the Arduino is. And rather than having to manually configure them and write code in ASM, it allowed people to use much simpler code to write programs or what do they call them these days? They don't call them programs anymore. Applications. No, programs. Uh, to write a program for the pick chip. And, you know, you could just say delay one or whatever it was. And it was just, it would create a second delay. Exactly the same as what the Arduino does in a way. Um, but not as powerful because the baseline PICs and stuff just aren't as powerful as the AVRs on an Arduino board are. And fun fact, if you know what you're doing, you can erase the bootloader off the Arduino board and actually program them directly in the proper AVR language. Um, and they will work a lot more smoothly. If you start trying to get into really time-critical programming and on Arduino, you start noticing you get glitches and stuff. And it's the same again. You're writing a program in a higher level language uh, programming language that's being translated to a lower level language which is then getting put into a bootloader which is self is then running that program interpreted how it wants it to run um, i can write some programs in c this is running in asm i like asm because it uses a lot less memory up it's a lot clunkier to work with and it takes a lot longer to write a program but uh, I know what every single file register in this device is doing and where every single bit is. Uh, I just like that. It makes for much efficient, more efficient programming. But yeah, just a random little waffle. Um, so yeah, if you're ever doing timing critical operations using a PIC, um, you can't use the internal RC oscillator because it's never spot on to start with and you can mess about trying to trim your program bits around to try and get it to run bang on accurate but a few degrees of temperature change from when you did your program and 
over time, over hours, you'll lose seconds. Over weeks, you'll lose minutes. And uh, over months, you'll lose hours. Um, so, yeah, that was just my little random... Because, you know, I haven't made a video in ages. And to anyone out there who thinks about doing some programming, don't turn your back on PICs. They're not dead yet. Once you get your head around them, they're really, really awesome little devices to use. Uh, okay, yeah, they don't come on a board with a 5 volt power supply and everything, but you can buy, you know, basic boards which allow you to do that. They get their power direct from the USB cable. And you can get ones that are far more capable than the AVRs. They're just not as easy to get your head around as it is with an Arduino. They don't have the support. Um, but if you want... You know, uh, there's so many Arduinos, these incredibly powerful and expensive devices are put to using real simple circuits and programs where just a baseline version, of like a 12F508, which is a real dead simple PIC with only 25 bytes of user RAM for storing variables whilst the program's running, far better and cheaper option. You just have to, you know, build a bit more circuit to support it, but... Yeah, anyway, that's all. And as always, if you've watched this, thanks for watching. And I will have some more interesting stuff coming up at some point. Sometimes you just got to sit on your house and feel it grow for a bit, which is uh, pretty much what I've been doing this week. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching.